Ooh, look at that. It's all covered in clouds too. Isn't that sick? This place is huge. Pretty beautiful. I get this sight almost every day walking back to the dorms. So, highly recommend. Highly recommend. Well, one thing I could say that I have noticed is that the people my age that I meet just out on the streets, like by a club or something on a Friday night, are very different than the people that go to my university. Like it's a whole different, like a whole nother scene. So I felt like I was actually more immersed into, you know, the Russian like youth culture outside of my own university where everyone's my age just by meeting people, you know, outgoing clubbing or to bars or something so like they listen to the same music I listen to they play like the same games they're like they dress the same way I do so it's actually really pretty interesting seeing I see such a huge difference in the difference in the way people dress just by their generation here three Russian songs to listen to let's see in terms of I mean, like the classical music goes without saying, um, but in terms of like more popular songs, I would say one Soviet song that I really like is Moskovsky Okna. Вот опять небес темнеет вот и окна в сумраке зажглись. Здесь живут мои друзья, и дыхание затая в ночные окна. I like this one, but then I also like some of the Russian rap <laughs> has, has helped. So with, with my vocabulary at least, actually I will be taking a test in Russian sometimes and I will only recognize the word because I listen to it in music. Um, anyway, so that's, that's been helpful. So I like Oxymiron and Markul and Thomas Mraz. Kalinka. I don't listen to Russian music, but if you like Justin Bieber type stuff, you can listen to Igor Krid. He's a very complicated figure. Face. Oh. <laughs> I know a song by him, but I think it's too inappropriate to sing on the video. I really know more like of the older Russian songs just for the cultural. I think nowadays a lot of modern songs I've listened to sound just kind of like American pop music or rap. Um, oh, Aksimiron. I know him. Three Russian films to watch. Brat, of course. I liked Brat. Oh my gosh. Brat. Brat. Just watch Brat. Battleship Potemkin uh, is a classic. Ironia Sudbi. But there are so many. I forget the, the title in Russian, but um, the Desert of the White Sun, this classic. That's a favorite uh, because I like Western move, like the Westerns, old wild Westerns in the United States. And then to hear that this is called Eastern, I thought it was quite quite clever. Oh, oh and Masha Medved. Russian book to read. More like, what is a Russian book not to read? Um, the Chekhov is one of my favorites. He's the one that got me very interested in Russian literature. So I realized that this is standard for Russians, but in the United States, for instance, in school, I had no required Russian reading. Um, so I had to discover it really, I think, for myself. Um, so as if somebody who has no, I would always say Chekhov. Um, but then one that gets, that I find my friends are very interested in, one I recommend is Master and Margarita. <laughs> also, nobody in the United States really knows this. Um, so a lot of things that Russians take for granted as classics are lost in the West. And so I feel like if any of the classics are promoted, then... War and Peace, or The Master and the Margarita. I think both of those are very well-written books. Um, I try to read them in Russian, but it's very hard, but they're very good books. Well, there's a book called Red Cavalry by a guy named Ozak Babel. Oh man, that's, that's a good read. This is some classic Russian literature. Red Cavalry, read that one. Favorite Russian food? I love the honey cakes. 
without a fail. Um, Medivik, yeah, I love this. Um, and they don't make it quite right in the United States. And I learned from my one of my mentors that they make it with sour cream here. Um, and, and that's why it is so good. The food actually isn't so terrible. Everybody said I would hate the food, that they only eat potatoes and meat. And that's not true. <laughs> Um, yeah, but I, one thing I like about the cafes is that you, you can tell them how much you want in terms of grams. And that's not something that's very popular in the United States. And so I really, um, I appreciate that because I can try a lot of different things or like if I'm really feeling vegetables, I can get as many as I want or like something small that's sweet. It's like, it's quite nice. So I like that style. In America, we're we kind of fake polite, well it's not faking politeness, but we give off a happy, sni a happy smile, a happy thank you. It's like, thank you, but here's just spasiba. It's the tone of it is different, I guess. Russians are super genuine people. They're very interesting people, and they'll tell you what's on their mind. That's for sure. Definitely, I don't hear thank you or please that much, but it's not because they're being rude. It's just not something that is said here as much as it is where I'm from because I think we say thank you and please probably a little more than we need to. <laughs> it's just what we're taught to do. You don't always have to agree with people, I think. In the United States there's this huge culture of not wanting to offend somebody or not, like, if you disagree then you have to disagree on other things too. But in Russia, I don't worry so much about offending people. And so the way that I'm able to communicate with them is from like a place of my honesty. Um, so for instance, uh, if I have some place to be and I need to rush past somebody, somebody in the United States might go, hey, like, what's the rush? And here in Russia, I can be, I can say, well, you know, I've got this place to be. And they'll be like, that's fine, that's fine. Like, you go out ahead of me. Like, everybody's sort of for themselves um, in a large way. And I kind of like that.